বোলা হির তাই খোলেরা কেউ না ছাড়া মার সীতা বলেরা সাইলে খালি কলা বাঁচে মাদের Namaste and welcome to Inspirations, the TV show that brings you inspiring people working in Nepal. Today, we have Dr. David Molden, the Director General of IC Mode. Welcome, David. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Let's start off by you telling us a little bit about your, your childhood, some of your childhood memories, your education, that kind of thing. Okay, I grew up uh, actually in California in Los Angeles and uh, I think I had a, a pretty privileged childhood in the sense education was there, food always on the table, a wonderful mother and father and sister and brother. Uh, but on the other hand, I think I was always wondering being in Los Angeles, I, I kind of felt that like a bubble, right? Here I am living in this world. Is every place in the world like that? Or is there something different outside the bubble? How was it that you actually, I mean, came to Nepal? What, I mean, what was kind of your professional experience? Yeah, I think I grew up in Los Angeles. I actually had a chance to um, move to go to university to Colorado. I went to University of Denver. Uh, after that, to uh, join the Peace Corps again to explore and uh, so worked as a volunteer for two years in the mountain kingdom of Lesotho in southern Africa. So I w went from Lesotho, I got my PhD, then I went back to uh, worked in uh, India, Egypt, uh, and finally got an opportunity to come to Nepal in 1991, working actually with irrigation. So I been, was in Nepal from 1991 to 95 working both with communities, irrigation communities, as well as the Nepal government at that time. And uh, that's what brought me here. I went away from Nepal and fortunately, and I was so excited, had this opportunity to come back to Nepal with Isimo. So that, that kind of, in a, in a short version of what, what got me here now. You've been with IC Mode a year now. Yeah. And can you tell us something about IC Mode and the types of projects you're involved in? Yeah. What exactly are you doing? Uh, IC Mode is uh, is actually owned by eight different countries, so we're an intergovernmental organization, uh, and the the countries kind of stretch from Afghanistan to Myanmar. So it's Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, India, China, Bhutan, Nepal, uh, uh, Bangladesh, and Myanmar. So, but it, it covers the mountain areas. So our, our vision is that mountain people uh, enjoy improved livelihoods in a sustainable environment, right? So that's the vision. And what are, what are some of the projects then that you're doing? And the headquarters of Isimode is in Nepal then? We're sitting in the headquarters right here in Kathmandu. Uh, Isimode has been here. This is actually our 30th year of existence and, and over that time uh, ha have done considerable work uh, both in Nepal and the eight, eight different countries. So um, and in the past it's been on uh, forestry, on agriculture, on beekeeping, there's been work in roads and, and environment and all kinds of different different work and I think it's uh, people of the staff at Isimode over the 30 year period have been uh, just a wonderful resource. So we have uh, uh, programs on uh, adaptation to change and it, that can be climate change, right, and, or it could be all kinds of different changes. For example, um, globalization and migration is, are changes that people in communities feel. There's one uh, uh, ni nice example, um, you know, what, one of the issues with climate change, or we're, we're, we're seeing higher intensity rainfall and more droughts, right? So flooding becomes a concern. And so one way to adapt to climate change is to get ready for floods. And uh, so we have, um, with our with team members inside and outside of ISIMO, developed kind of simple technology for flood early warning that senses when the water level in a river goes up, sends an alarm signal 
gets to telephones and tell villi tells villagers, you know, do something, move now. And so it's that, that kind of thing is getting that in, working with the community to make sure that stays there for the long term. It usually does because people realize that the threat of flooding. A uh, big crane came in and put a satellite receiver on our roof and it's worth looking at when you go there later. It's a satellite receiver for MODIS satellite so that we can get information, especially about rain and snow, and give them to other countries. Yeah. So that, that's one way we do things. The other thing is we work with um, high-valued crops and, and medicinal herbs, thinking that, thinking that there's a market for that. And if we could get more, not, not, get, if we could get those market links, right, and get the fruits, nuts, the medicinal herbs to the markets, that that would be a good way for people to get more income and thereby cope with climate change and other kinds of changes. There are 10 major river basins coming out of the Himalayas, serving about 1.3 billion people downstream. And uh, so the Himalayas is a globally critical water resource. So if we think of the food security, the energy, that comes from the Himalayas that serves Asia, how important Asia is globally, that the Himalayas are this global resource. So we're kind of looking at how people manage water, both at community scales, but also right across uh, countries. A third area that's related to that is what's happening to the glaciers, what's happening to the snow and the permafrost. So there, what we'd really like to do is work with other science organizations, in this case, and get the best information we can gather possible to, to really find out you know, what, what, what is happening to, to our cryosphere, which is critically important for water resources. So we, have, um, we do some in-house, but we also train students, for example, from Kathmandu University, to go up on the glaciers to take these measurements. We work with other glaciologists from around the world to try and get a better, better knowledge of what, what is happening in that area. What we, kind of a big threat uh, now is these uh, glacial lakes and the threat of glacial lake outburst floods. So we're, we're also trying to understand that threat as well as far as an adaptation strategy. Classic Diamond Jewelers. <laughs> Ani Puraskar Navarima, thus for the summer, Nisuka Nagari Train. Top Jan Karikalagi, phone number Charts Hobbies, Arts of Pacha. What are some of the major hurdles that you face, and, and how do you try and overcome those hurdles? As a regional organization, right, what, we've kind of set our, our goal high, right, because what it means is we have to work across borders right. with people, right, right? And, and that's a, in this region can be a, a pretty significant hurdle. Yeah. Um, but what, I think we've found a pretty good way to do that. One is if we, we're focusing on um, issues like uh, how do communities adapt. Right? It doesn't matter if you're in Bhutan or China or Nepal, people, mountain people are struggling. Right? And it's not that 
political, right? The, right. The, so we all want to find a way to <laughs> we all want to find a way to do that. So we that that's one way to do it. And then secondly, we focus a lot just on the to, for these transboundary type issues a lot on the science, right? So we find that scientists do collaborate, share ideas a lot. And so that's been a formula we've used. So we take that regional knowledge, apply it to the ground, and, and let local people, local governments try try to spread that to spread that out. So that's the way we're dealing with it. So we tr we we don't we really don't enter enter into the politics of, of all yeah, this, right? We keep keep uh, keep at that level. But if you come here to this building where we're sitting, we have so many. Uh, workshops where we get people mostly from the countries of the region but also from outside really in just just on uh, people are just excited there's always a buzz at the at the workshops of, about this knowledge sharing so I think it's a very good good formula yeah and who who has inspired you in your life the stories uh, again goes back to this uh, volunteer assignment in, in Lesotho. Uh, women had to walk uh, several hours to fetch water or they could get some water nearby but the, there was a lot of disease because of the quality of that water. So uh, I had a connection, a Swiss friend that and said hey, who was working in water and I said hey can we get a pump out here to this village? Can we get a, a well put in this village? And, uh, and so he came and checked that out, and actually the women got organized, right, to raise some funds and to work with the Swiss organization. I just kind of made the connection like oh, that, yeah. and actually got this uh, well installed in this village, and uh, and I think that really did make a difference in the livelihoods of the local people. So you're asking who is inspiring? What well, was the, in a sense, the people of that village, Absolutely. right, who were kind of teaching me as well about life. That's when I decided that I would switch course from this, uh, from, from what I was doing to, to go into this groundwater hydrology, right, so I could do more, more of that and help people out. So that, that was in a sense uh, uh, a life-changing uh, moment at that. So that was inspiring. Yeah. And talk about um, some of your unforgettable moments too. And you, you were telling me about your daughter. What's in I have two daughters, and they grew, both went to school here in Nepal. They then they went to school in Sri Lanka. So in many ways, very Asian, right? So right. <laughs> except right. the way right. maybe the way they right. look <laughs> is not. But they, for example, I remember my daughter uh, going home for a Thanksgiving dinner and said, "I don't want this turkey. I want some dalbat." Anyway, she went off. Left home, went to university, and, and uh, met a nice Nepali man, and it kept in contact. And then, just uh, I moved to Nepal a year ago, and then they decided to get married. And so we had uh, here in Nepal. He's a uh, Tuladar, and they na from the Nawar community. So we had discussions with the family, and had a wonderful uh, Nawar style wedding in October. 2012. Finally, what message would you like to leave our viewers? Isimod is, is really how important uh, mountains are in, for the globe, for local people as well. Uh, and I think that mountains are often uh, neglected in, in discussions, both uh, and mountain people can be forgotten because they're far away and remote. Um, but uh, but I think it, it is that let, let's look to the mountains, right? Look for inspiration from local communities, how they're really coping or adapting to that situation. Let's tell the world about it, right? And, and see if we can, I think that, that will be a good key for Nepal society as well as the globe, if we can really start focusing our attention on rural people in, in the mountain regions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I'm Mike Rosenkrantz and Perry Batala.